Well, good morning, everyone. I want to say that why is anybody actually listening to us when you can look right behind us and see the reason we're here and why we're so adamant about protecting it? Why for 25 years, and really for, as Senator Masto said, for so uh, over 100 years, people have come together to really make sure that this beautiful and special place that the sun is shining down on us today to remind us, just look right behind me, this is why we're here. We need no words to say what that means when we look at it. But I want to thank Senator Padilla, of course, his first year in the Senate for hosting this. Uh, really appreciate it. Of course, Senator Feinstein, I know you're watching virtually. Appreciate you all the time. Of course, Catherine and I, my partner in the Senate, our Governor Sisolak, who works with us on uh, hand in hand and all of the things that we try to do every day to make Nevada the best place to live. And I have to give a shout out to my dear friend, Congressman John Garamendi, and his wonderful wife, Patty, everybody else uh, who's here with us today, and our keynote speaker, Secretary Holland. So really uh, so pleased to be here with all of you. And uh, 25 years in the life of uh, Lake Tahoe, it's just a blink of an eye. And we want to make sure that there's many more blinks to come in the future going forward. And I want to thank all the organizations. It takes so many people to make this happen, the advocates who work tirelessly to protect Lake Tahoe, and especially the Lake Tahoe Fund for organizing the summit, the incredible work that you do uh, day in, day out, year after year to make sure that Lake Tahoe remains uh, one of the world's most beautiful bodies of water. And what we learn here, we're the model to export out all of the things that we learn about sustainability and to keep uh, other bodies of water uh, pristine as well. And it's just a beloved national treasure. Like I said, I don't have to tell any of you um, anything about that. But it's also really important to both of our state's economies. And there's no doubt that we've made tremendous progress over the years. But there's so much more to do, and there is no time to waste. As everyone said, the wildfires, there's a drought, there's erosion, there's so many things happening. We have to be on top of all of it. And it's why I fought with my colleagues uh, to preserve Lake Tahoe and the robust funding that we just passed in the Lake Tahoe Restoration Act. As both senators have mentioned, about $17 million right into the lake in our bipartisan infrastructure investment plan. And so what does it mean? It means funding for forest health, hazardous fuel reduction, watershed restoration, environmental improvement programs, uh, those awful invasive species. It's going to help us learn how to manage those better. And so many other things. And all of us here, together, we're going to continue to fight to be sure that the LTRA is, uh, is uh, funded this unique partnership funded into the future past 2024. We hope to get a 10-year extension on that. But I'll tell you, that's not all our infrastructure bill does. The Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, it's going to fund the needed repairs uh, for roads. It's going to upgrade the roads and the trails leading to this area, making it more accessible for everybody. And the Bipartisan Infrastructure Plan also includes an amendment that I had, bipartisan amendment, uh, unanimously adopted by the Senate to provide funding for road and highway projects that have been devastated due to a natural disaster. Maybe they've been melted in a fire or washed out in a flood, whatever that is. We want to be sure that we can use those federal funds to restore our highways and roads. And, of course, everyone here is talking about the wildfires. And luckily, the skies are a bit clearer today and we want to make them even more clear. It's a delicate ecosystem. It's a delicate balance, and we have to do everything that we can because climate change, increased temperatures, they directly connect to the growing intensity, not just of the wildfires, but of everything else that's happening here. And so the longer that we fail to address climate change, the more dangerous, the more costly, and the more we lose beautiful parts not just of Nevada and California, but all across this country, the more we lose our spectacular 
outdoors, our nature that we find so inspirational that we need and that makes America um, great. And so one of the bold efforts that we have to do, these are just some of the bold efforts we have to do to overcome the uh, climate crisis, support net zero greenhouse gas emissions, protect our public lands and our waters. And investing in the lake, like I said, we talk about economy, we invest in the people who work here in our communities. Lake Tahoe actually anchors a $5.1 billion economy, supports hundreds of local jobs. Tahoe Basin, I don't have to tell you, there's not just snow skiing, water skiing, uh, water sports, hiking, biking, camping, uh, I don't know, like snowboarding, snowshoeing, all, all of it. Uh, millions of visitors come here every year. I came here about 40 years ago. I can still remember my first time uh, skiing here. It was quite spectacular. And supporting our outdoor recreation and tourism is incredibly important as our local communities are recovering from COVID-19. And of course, more and more people are trying to seek the great outdoors. It serves as an outlet for individuals to enjoy these beautiful natural spaces. It creates opportunity for jobs. It stimulates travel and tourism economy. And I am the chair of the subcommittee for tourism, trade, and export promotion. And so I know the importance of outdoor recreation for California and Nevada. It's deep ties to Lake Tahoe. And so I held a subcommittee hearing um, to specifically examine the state of the outdoor recreation industry in the wake of the pandemic. And let me tell you, not just Nevada and California, every state in this nation relies on its tourism, relies on its outdoor, our spectacular outdoors. I'm sure the secretary will uh, tell you uh, all about that. Uh, it's really important that these things remain pristine, that Lake Tahoe remain pristine in the wake of the pandemic. And so I want everyone to know, rest assured, you not just have me as an ally in Congress, you have Senators Padilla, Feinstein, and Cortez Masto. We are here together, united, to fight for our states, to fight for our communities, to fight for the places we love and the people that we care about, because it matters to us. It's the way, same way that it matters to all of you. And so going forward, I know that we're going to work together in acting the holistic approach that's required to take on this task. And we're going to continue to see these beautiful shores behind me year in and year out and uh, 50 years, 100 years, <laughs> way into the future. Uh, for all of us to enjoy. So I want to thank you all for being here today, and uh, we're going to keep Tahoe blue. Thank you. <laughs>